All right, this is problem number 26 from 4.7 in the uh, sewer book. Uh, optimization. We're trying to find the largest of the area, sorry, the area of the largest trapezoid that can be inscribed in a circle of radius one, whose base is the diameter of the circle. Uh, I'm just going to make one little change to this problem. I'm going to make the radius, instead of one, I'm going to make it R, which makes this more general, a little trickier in the middle. But, uh, you know, at the end, you could still find this problem uh, by just substituting. Uh, one back in for R. So um, first thing I want to do is, well, you know, the first thing, a good first thing to do on these is to identify your, your primary equation, the thing that you're trying to optimize. In this case, it's the area of the trapezoid, right? So we need to maximize that area. So it's probably a good idea to actually write the formula for the area of a trapezoid. And the area of a trapezoid is really just the uh, average of the two bases, right? So it's, it's the, really the median of the trapezoid times the height. Um, so that's one half base one plus base two. That's your average of your two bases and then times the height. Um, so now what I need to do is find a way to connect the dimension of the circle here, the radius R, to my dimensions of my trapezoid. And uh, there's a couple ways you can do this. One way is to use a coordinate system. You can superimpose some axes. And uh, if there's a circle involved, I would, I would pretty much always put the, the, uh, the origin of the axis system um, at the center of the circle. That's uh, the easiest way to go. Then your circle equation is just x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And um, if you're going to do that, then you can focus on this point here on the trapezoid, this, this vertex of it in the first quadrant. And just give its coordinates as x and then you know y, where y is a point on the upper semicircle, right? So it's just going to be the square root of r squared minus x squared. And then what you can do is you can just um, you know find your dimensions of your trapezoid, like this dimension here is probably two x, right? This one's two r, and then your height is just the square root of r squared minus x squared. So that'll work. Uh, if you want to do it without the uh, axis system, it's really the same basic stuff. It's the same geometry at play. Um, just, you know, what I would probably do is call, again, this x. And then, um, you know, this whole thing here is r. And then if you call this y. And then here's a right triangle that you can use to get, you know, this value for y, right? Because again, this is this is r. That's a radius of the circle right there. So, however you get there, whether you're thinking about it in terms of a coordinate system or uh, just plain old geometry, uh, either way is going to get you uh, to the same point. All right. So, you know, if you if you got it now, you got the. This is the basic setup here. Um, this is a good time to pause and, and work through it before you watch the rest of the video. Um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and go forth with the solution here. Um, so again, uh, base one here is actually 2r, right? Because it's, here's r and, and here's r. So my area formula is going to be 1 half times 2r plus, and then uh, 2x, right? Because there's an x and there's an x. And then my height is just the square root of r squared minus x squared. I'm going to write it this way, r squared minus x squared to the 1 half power. Okay, and then uh, before I do any other stuff like some calculus here, I'm going to distribute that 1 half in. Now, could I have substituted in for x instead of for y, right, using the Pythagorean theorem here? I could have. And then the complicated part would be there instead. Um, it might actually be easier now that I think about it. Because then you'd just be substituting a y in, I don't know, you know, it's, it's 6 of 1. Who knows? Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and this, I'm going to do the derivative from here since we already kind of started down this track. And I, I feel like I know where I'm going with this. Um, so one more thing, though, I want to point out. What we just did here. Um, if if we had if we'd kept this as y for a moment, 
uh, you want to look at that and realize this area formula, this primary equation, um, it's in terms of, it was in terms of a few, of a couple of variables, right? We, we had X and Y in there. Uh, it might be tempting to see a third variable, uh, R. Remember, R is not a variable here. R is a constant. You've got to keep that in mind on these. You've got to treat it as a constant. If we'd have done the original problem where we called it one, it, that would be a little easier. But um, it doesn't matter. If it's R, it's still, you just treat it like a number. Um, so we used uh, this other information about circles in order to substitute in. And uh, that gave us uh, this, this area formula in terms of just one variable, which is what we wanted. So now we need the derivative, dA dx. I'm going to do a product rule. So the, the derivative of the first part here is just 1. So we're going to get r squared minus, oops, minus x squared to the 1 half plus, and then we're going to keep the r plus x and take the derivative of the second part, which is going to be 1 half times r squared minus x squared to the negative 1 half times the derivative of the inside, which is negative 2x. Let me move that so we can see it. And um, then I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to clean up the algebra here a little bit. We're going to distribute the two. We're going to multiply the two and the one half. Bring the x out front. We'll make this a negative rx minus x squared. Oops, plus x squared. Uh, and then we've got this r squared minus x squared to the negative one half here. Okay, so let me do that back in blue again. The other thing I'm going to do here is factor out this uh, r squared minus x squared factor. I'm going to take it to the lesser of the two powers, the, the negative one half power. Okay, so we'll factor that out as a greatest common factor. And when you factor it out of that first term, the difference in the powers is 1. So it's just going to leave in r squared minus x squared to the 1 power. Um, when I factor it out of the second term, it's that whole thing exactly as is. So it's just going to leave this minus rx minus x squared. And uh, so now we have the derivative, and it's factored. Clean up a little bit. Whoops, oh, the way that looks. And uh, so what I want to do now is um, find any zeros of the numerator or denominator of the derivative. Uh, I'm going to focus on this part. Uh, this factor, if this were to equal zero, um, that would mean x would equal r, which is kind of a dumb trapezoid, right? It'd be a flat trapezoid with no height. So that's not the answer we want. So it's really just going to come from this factor. Uh, so I'm going to set that equal to zero. We get a negative 2x squared minus rx plus r squared equals zero. Or if you multiply by negative 1, 2x squared plus rx uh, minus r squared equals zero. And then I'm going to try to factor this. If that doesn't work, I would switch to the quadratic formula. But uh, I think this is actually going to work. If I do a 2x here and an, and an r here that's positive, and then if I do a negative, whoops, a negative r here, then you get your negative rx and your positive 2rx, which add up the positive 1rx. So that's good. And guys, the, the only good solution here, and we could have x equal negative r, but that's, again, that's another dumb trapezoid up there, right? That's not the answer we want. That's a degenerate figure. It's going to be a minimum area, the area of 0. Or we can uh, have this one equal 0. And so we get 2x equals r. Uh, x equals 1 half r. And uh, if we want the area of the largest trapezoid, then all we have to do is plug that into our area function right here to solve. And so we're going to get um, r plus 1 half r times r squared minus 1 half r quantity squared. So 1 fourth r squared to the 1 half power. And so we get 3 halves r times 3 fourths r squared to the 1 half. And so I think that gives us 3 square root of 3 
over 4 r squared as our max area. And if you plug 1 in for r, it'll answer this specific question. Look good? And of course, you could get the height of the trapezoid by just using this y expression, um, plugging the optimal x value in for x, if you were asked for that. We weren't asked for that here. So there we go. Uh, we used the coordinate geometry here, although, again, just not much different if you just take a straightforward geometric approach.